Galatians chapter 1 it says <clears throat> Jesus Christ verse 4 gave himself for us not only to die for our sins to save us from our sins that's one thing he gave himself for our sins number 1 but also that he might rescue us from this evil world according to the will of God our Father. What did he want to save us from? We are not physically saved from the world, we are living in this world. But he wanted to save us in our spirits, from the spirit of this world, which is completely contrary to God. He, so he died not only to save us from our sins, but to rescue us from the spirit of the world in which we were trapped. That means a mindset where all my values are the values of the world, he came to rescue me from that. He came first of all to get rid of all my past sins. That's right, that's why he died. He said all my past sins are cleansed away. But even when a person's past sins are cleansed away, his mindset is according to the values of the world because that's what we have grown from childhood to do and believe. And Jesus came to rescue me from that so that I have a different attitude while living in this world. So that's what I want to ask you. Your sins are forgiven, that I know. Has Jesus rescued you from this way of thinking? It says in 1 John in chapter 2. Please try and remember these verses. What scripture says about the spirit of this world. It's quite an amazing thing. We know that Jesus said that you cannot love God and money at the same time. Here it says, the Holy Spirit says, the words of Jesus, really. 1 John 2 verse 15, don't love the world or the things in the world. Anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Or as this translation says, love of the world squeezes out love of the Father. The more we love the world, the love for God is squeezed out of our life. And you see that. You see that in your lack of devotion to Christ, lack of time to read the Bible. <clears throat> you know, that's what television does, robs you of time to spend with God. Tell me honestly, those of you who watch a lot of television, Hasn't it squeezed out time for God in your life? You may say, I'm watching good programs. I remember a, a brother who, in another country, who ordered a television set and he was doubtful about it. Should I get it or not get it? And then, anyway, he ordered it and the Sony truck brought the television to his house with a big advertisement. Sony brings the world into your home. Oh, that was enough for him. He said, God spoke to me. <laughs> he asked them to take it right back. <laughs> it does. It brings the world right into your living room. And your children may not have as much discernment as you, Many of us, in our younger days, we grew up without television. We spent a lot of time studying the scriptures, reading the Bible, praying, and we've got a solid database. So even when we see some of these things, we can reject it. Our children don't have that database. They never had the time that we had to study the scriptures. They've grown into a world flooded with these values. They are not able to resist it like we can, older generation. You got to be careful. And I believe that's one of the main reasons why we don't have a spiritual generation growing up that values God more than everything else in this world. I don't believe uh, merely by getting rid of television you 
get rid of the world, you can get rid of it and still have. There were worldly people long before television was invented, thoroughly worldly people. So I'm not saying the solution is to get rid of television. There may be some good things you can get from it. But all I say is, remember that there is a potential source of danger there. It's not just television, it can be your computer with the internet connection. So it, the solution is not to get rid of it because it has some advantages. But remember that that is a source of danger. Don't play the fool with it, it's like, it's like a plug point. Electricity is very useful, but I don't go putting metal things into the plug point. It's dangerous. Ch children don't know that. They'll go putting those metal things into the plug point and get a shock. So we have dangers not only in the television and internet, we have dangers in the plug points. So I'm not saying we get rid of all that. Be aware of the danger. Be careful. Plug points are dangerous. Danger. You know, you see outside these electricity play, uh, things when they come into the house. Danger. 440 volts. Skull and crossbones. You need to put something like that in front of the television and computer also. Use it. I mean, people use those electricity cabinets, when the fuses go, they got to change it. I'm not saying we got to get rid of it. If we get rid of it, we lose all the advantages of electricity. But put a skull and crossbones there and say, danger. And then handle it. People who play the fool with electricity and say, oh, well, I'm okay, they die. It's the same with people who indiscriminately watch programs on television or watch anything on the internet. They die. The thing is the people who get electrocuted, the death is obvious because it's physical. People who get killed by television and the internet, their death is not obvious. So it's more dangerous. And so think of Noah. Jesus said the last days will be like the days of Noah, plenty of sex, plenty of violence. That's what it was in the days of Noah. Sex and violence were the primary things in the days of Noah. He said it would be like the days of Lot. Sex and violence, abnormal sex and violence were the things in the days of Lot. And um, the pursuit of wealth that Lot was after. These are two, two different types of believers. I mean, Lot also escaped, but he escaped with a lot of regret. He lost all his family, he lost his daughters, he lost his sons-in-law, he lost his wife. And when I say he lost his daughters, he lost his daughters to immorality. Because his values were not right. Noah also escaped, but Noah escaped with his whole family. All his three daughters-in-law and all his sons, because he took a clear, drew a clear line. Lot did not draw a clear line. So he escaped himself and he lost his whole family. So there are two types of people going to be there in the last days. One who escaped with their family, like Noah, and others who maybe escape themselves but lose their family. Would you like to stand in heaven without your family? Now is the time to repent and say, Lord, I want to draw a clear line between me and the world. Religion is not enough. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. It says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then it says in verse 17, the world is passing away. and all its lusts, and that's translated in this translation as the world and all its wanting, 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 wanting this, wanting that, wanting this, wanting that, wanting this, wanting that is all going to go. That's the meaning of lusts. Lust means I want this and I want that. And I, it's not just sexual. It's not evil always. I see something and I want it. That's called the lust of the eyes. Sexual lust is called the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes is the desire to buy everything that you see. I want that, and I want that, and I want that. I see somebody wearing something, I want that. And it says here, the world and all its wanting, 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 wanting is on its way out. But whoever does what God wants, he will last for eternity. There's things which we want, and there are things which God wants. And I can have a choice.
I can say, I'm going to live for what I want and I want this and I want this and I want my own way here. You can have a fight with your wife or husband, I want my way. That's your want, you want, you want, you want. It's going to perish. That's the world. But he who does what God wants, God, what do you want? The passion of Jesus' life was that. Even if it meant death on a cross, God, if you want it, I'll accept it.